and we back. Now today we're doing another one of those NBA news videos where I talk about what happened in the league over the past couple days and kind of give my opinions on it. I did one of these about a month ago and you guys seem to love it. It was back when Alfred Payton cut his hair and that was like world breaking news because we had an NBA player basically go from like an okay starter to an MVP ca candidate just with a bunch of clippers. So today we're doing a similar thing as we talk about things that are going on. This first one is not something that happened today or this week or last week and actually was announced at the beginning of June and, I, and many people didn't talk about it but I think it's a very fun thing or it's an experiment that the NBA is going to go through and I think it could change the league. Now starting in the summer league 2018 NBA coaches are getting challenge flags. Yes, challenge flags. Similar to the NFL and NFL coaches get to throw a challenge flag to get referees to review a play whether it be a marking on a down or whether or not somebody was out of bounds or something similar to that. The NFL is trying to orchestrate that into current day. And that's beautiful because though the referees try their best and they try to put their best foot forward, they don't get everything right. And this gives coaches the opportunity to say, you know what, review that. Now I know in the NBA, the last two minutes, basically the referees, they, they review everything, but sometimes they get things wrong or sometimes things happen at the end of the game and they don't get a chance to review it. The thing I'm thinking about specifically was a game back in December. It was kind of a meaningless regular season game, but let's play the clip. Officiating. He's out of bounds. Clearly, he stepped out of bounds. And as you can see, Giannis's foot definitely stepped out of bounds. Luckily for us, it was a meaningless game in December, but can you imagine if this happened on a larger game, whether it be the last game of the season trying to fight for playoff seeding or in the playoffs? But now with this inclusion, coaches can throw a flag like, ref, I think he stepped out of bounds. Go review that. Again, it is just a summer league thing, but I don't see how this can go bad. I know some fans are already complaining about the, the game being so slow when we already reviewing everything, but me personally, I'd rather that the referees get as much of the game right even if that means slowing down the game just a little bit. Because if I was an OKC Thunder fan that night, I'd be pretty heated. Next, we got our first trade of the 2018 NBA offseason. It was a beautiful one. It was a one-for-one -one deal. Marcin Gortat for Austin Rivers. Very rarely in the NBA do we see a one-for-one -one deal. Usually there may be some picks, a third, a sec third player involved. No, just a straight-up one-for-one. And it was a good deal for both sides. Let's start with the Clippers side. Clippers trade Austin Rivers. I know it's a sad moment. Doc Rivers no longer coaching his son, but in reality, Doc Rivers is the reason why his son got paid so much money. Austin Rivers opts into this $12 million deal because, because of course he will. There's really no market for him. But with him opting in, let's read the players on their rosters. Tyrone Wallace, Milos Teodosic, Jawan Evans, Lou Will, CJ Williams, Sendarius Thornwell, not Austin Rivers, not Sean Kilpatrick, Avery Bradley, and Patrick Beverly. And I forgot to even mention Shea Gilgis Alexander and Jerome Robinson. That's just two more guards to add on to this list. Now I understand that some of them are free agents this year, but that's just their guards. They had an abundance of guards and they had to get rid of one of them. And let's get rid of the guy that's getting paid the most amount of money that may be a little bit overpaid. And in return, they get Martian Gortat, which basically means for us, that we're probably gonna see DeAndre Jordan either opt out of his deal and go to free agency or opt in and get traded somewhere else. So it's a beautiful deal for the Clippers. Yeah, Martian Gortat may not be the piece, but you know, gets that guy off the books and brings in the center to potentially replace DeAndre Jordan. Again, the Clippers are on this movement where they're trying to rebuild and retool while also staying competitive. And Martian Gortat, you can talk crap about him all you want, but he's still a okay, productive NBA player. Now, what about the Wizards? Why do the Wizards do this deal? Y'all remember that whole beef between John Wall and Marcin Gortat? Marcin Gortat tweets, great team victory that one game or one of the games where John Wall was out. And then they went on a few. They were like going on to interviews, talking trash about each other to the public. Just the way he put the team, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The way he put the team in the, in, in the little exclamation points, and I'm like, whoa. And it was more just shocking to hear from him and understanding that he gets the most assist from me and the most spoon-fed baskets ever. <laughs> so one of them had to be moved, and a couple of days ago, Marcia Gortat was interviewed on someone's podcast. I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. It was a podcast, though. My podcast link is in the description, by the way. And he said, I am 99% sure I'm going to get traded this offseason. Well, he was right. He got traded. Who would have thought that a team would pick their superstar over just a starting center? 
And now they get Austin Rivers. And honestly, I believe that Austin Rivers is a quality player too. Right now, he's working out with none other than Victor Oladipo's trainer. Y'all saw what that trainer did for Victor Oladipo this offseason? Don't sleep if Austin Rivers end up being like a pretty solid NBA player. I don't think he'll ever get to all-star caliber. Let me get that out your mind. But I think he's kind of crapped on in the league because his dad is the reason he got paid. And some people believe that his dad is the only reason he's in the league. I think he's okay, but he may get better this offseason dealing with the guy that got turned Victor Oladipo from this to this. So, the first trade of the offseason is done. Next, we got team president of the LA Lakers, Magic Johnson, saying that if the Lakers strike out on free agency this year and next year, well, he's going to step down as a team president. Those are some bold words. If you look at the recent history of the LA Lakers, they kind of have struck out. Think back in 2016, we had guys like DeMar DeRozan, Kevin Durant on the free agent market. And people thought that, yeah, those guys may be coming to LA. DeMar DeRozan's from there, baby. Of course he's going to go there. Forget re-signing in Toronto. And they struck out. And they struck out and ended up signing Timothy Mozgov and Luol Deng instead. Not really the superstars that they wanted. And then you hit 2017. And then this crazy class, not that great. So they make a smart decision. They're like, you know what? We're not going to throw out crazy money because next year we'll have time or money for two max players. And that's right now. They have the money for two max players. There are max players out there that could be, there will be free agents. Paul George, LeBron James, Marcus Cousins. Chris Paul, I mean, Chris Paul will probably resigned, but he's a max caliber player. Now, Magic is saying that, listen, if we don't hit on this free agency or next free agency, next free agency has Ka uh, Kawhi Leonard, Klay Thompson, I'm pretty sure Kyrie Irving. So he's saying, listen, if we don't get our max players, if we don't get our superstars over the next two years, I will quit my job. I, don't have, I wouldn't have the balls to say that, honestly. I love my job, and I'm sure he does too, but... L.A. should be a place where players want to play, and we're just going to have to see July 1st if it is. So lastly, we have a picture put together by Pogdas underscore hair on Reddit, who's comparing the 2003 draft class, one of the best draft classes of all time, to the 2018 draft class. They got some big shoes to fill into the 2018 draft class and some big clothes to fill too, because look at the fashion of draft night in 2003. Of course, you got Melo, Chris Bosh, LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and of course, Kirk Heinrich, who should always be in the same conversation as those other guys, rocking these oversized, super big suits. And that was kind of the thing. Look, look back on Soldier Boy, which is like three years after 2003, rocking a similar thing, but like in streetwear versus 2018, that everybody's rocking the tightly cut tapered pants, bow ties, and well-fitted suits. Fashion has come a long way in just 15 years, and if this, this trend continues to go, pretty soon people are gonna be rocking mini skirts on draft night in, in 2030. And that's the end of the video. I'm sure that we'll do something similar to this again once free agency actually starts, because of course there's so much more to talk about. Where's LeBron gonna go? Where is the Marcus Cousins gonna get that money? He's looking at the like it's so much that can happen So hopefully you do enjoy this news thing. It's a little bit different pace than the normal stuff But you guys seem to like it last time. So of course we had to do it again. Thank y'all so much for watching If you did enjoy just let me know by leaving a like we back peace